will be teaching you how to make Roblox GFX using the new version of Blender. This video will be the first part of our tutorial, so we will be focusing on just rendering. Before we begin, make sure you have Blender 2.8 and have access to Roblox Studio. I also recommend getting a mouse if you're using a laptop. In the video, my mouse cursor will indicate if I'm right or left clicking. Red means left click and blue means right click. Just before we start, I highly recommend making a folder to store all your render files. This will help you locate your files much easier and will also keep you organized. Finally, we can begin. Start off by opening up Roblox Studio. Then open up a base plate. Click on the plugins tab and click on the load character plugin. If you don't have this plugin, I've made a video on how to download it and how to use it. Once you click on the plugin, insert any username that you want to make a GFX of. I'll be using my character for today. Also, make sure that the spawn at origin is checked. And then you want to click on spawn R6. As you can see, our character popped up in the middle of our base plate. Um, this is perfect and you want to make sure that you don't move your character from the position it is now. Um, and from here, you can just start adding any models or customizing your character depending on what you're trying to make in a GFX. If you want to add a custom face to Cal, simply just click the small arrow beside your username in the explorer window. Then do the same thing with the head and remove the decal by pressing delete. From here you can add any face from the toolbox. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on customizing your Roblox character in Roblox Studio, let me know in the comments. There are lots of creators who make great face decals. If you want to check them out, I'll leave them in the description. Once you're done, we can finally export our character and models. Under your username, select all your character's hats. You can do this by holding control and clicking on the hats. Now right click and select on export selection. Then you just want to find a folder where you want to save that obj file and give it a name. Once you're done doing that, you can do the exact same thing with the other models if you added models that you want to include into your render. Now open up Blender and click away from the window that pops up. And as you can see, Blender has a cube, a light, and a camera. You can select objects by right clicking on them and it will turn orange. If you want to select multiple objects, you can always hold shift and select the other objects. In Blender, you can also move around objects. If you go to the left side of your screen, you can see that we have the move, rotate, scale tools. Um, if I want to move, I can just simply click on the move tool and I will get these three arrows. I can move it up, sideways, and I can also rotate them scale them. We can also delete objects by pressing X and clicking on delete. You can also add objects by going up here and click on add and as you can see we have a variety of options that we can insert into our 3D view. You can also press shift A as a shortcut key. There are two important tools that you will always need whenever you make a render. That is the lighting and the camera. Whatever the camera sees is how your final render will look like. If you want to go into the camera view, you can simply just click on view, cameras, and active camera. Or you can go to view again, go to viewpoint, and click camera. Or you can click 
on you can press on the number zero on your number pad you can also change the size of this camera if we go to the camera view you can see that as I change these numbers the camera size will change our lighting is also another very important tool that we need to use every time we make a render there are a variety of types of lighting that you can use so if you select on the lighting and you click on this light bulb icon you can see that right now we have the point light you can change it to the sun spot and area depending on where the light is that's where the light will hit the objects so right now our light is on the right side so that means that the light is hitting on the right side of this cube if we head over to our rendered view you can see that the lighting is only touching this side of the cube because that's where it's placed you can navigate around your 3d view by holding down the, the scroller button and you can zoom in and zoom out with the scroller as well Alright, once you know the basics on how to use Blender, go ahead and open up the rig that I've left in the description. When exporting anything from Roblox Studio, you will have an MTL file, an OBJ file, and a texture file. Once you've opened the rig, select the head and click on the file icon under the image texture. Now you want to find a texture and you can also change the views to thumbnails to make sure that you've got the right texture. As you can see, your texture has showed up on the character. Now you can just get rid of the extra window by going to the corner and dragging up. Now let's import the rest of our models. Go to File, then Import, and select on Wavefront OBJ. From here, you can go to the files where you saved your other models and make sure that you select on the OBJ file. As you can see, our hat is placed right on the character. Quickly head over to your render properties and make sure that your render engine is in cycles. If we go into rendered view, you can see that our hat is transparent. We can quickly fix this by clicking on the plus sign at the top of your screen and under general, select shading. Once you're in the shading workspace, select the hat and head over to the second image texture. Drag the line to the clear coat normal. And now as you can see, the hat turned back to its normal texture and it's no longer transparent. Now go to the default view and now we're going to attach the hat to our rig hat attachment. Now at the bottom right of your screen, click on the toggle x-ray and on the wireframe view. Now you should see this small black outline square. We are going to parent the hat into the square. So by doing that, make sure that the hat is selected, then the outline black square. Then you're going to press on control P and click on object. Now that we've parented the hat onto the rig's hat attachment, head over to material mode, select the rig, and change to pose mode. From here, select the head bone, and as you can see, when you rotate it, the hats will move along with the head. Now I'm going to import the rest of my models. And I'm also going to be adding their own textures. Quick tip before you move around any models. Head over to object, then click set origin and click origin to geometry. This will help you move around anything that you have in your 3D view a much easier and comfortable way because the arrow will be right in the middle of that object. From here, you can just prepare your scene by moving around the models that you have imported. Now we can start posing. Make sure that you get a good front view of your full character, then click on the rig and switch to pose mode. Now you can start selecting on the limb controls. You can rotate the arms, rotate the head, and do 
whatever you like. It really depends on what you're trying to do for your GFX. In here, I'm just changing my view so that I can rotate the limb in the right direction that I want. Um, it is always important to do this because sometimes when you want to rotate a limb a certain way, it won't turn out well because you're not facing the right side, if you know what I mean. But yeah, you kind of get used to this after a while. And um, what I was trying to go for was my character looking up at the sun while covering it with her arm. So yeah. Also, if you want to move around your whole body, make sure that you go to object mode before you do so. Um, this is just a better way of moving around your character if you don't want it in the position it is now. Alright, once you're done posing your character, we are going to start adding a camera. But before we do that, make sure that you are in object mode and not pose mode. So be sure that you change to object mode. Now we are going to position the camera to our liking. Now before we do so, just make sure that you save the work that you're doing just in case Blender crashes. This is always important because I have gone through problems where I've lost very nice renders because I didn't save so it's always good to save at any time. Alright, so now we can head over to our camera view and we can move around our camera in an easier way. To do so, you can hold down on Shift F and you can move around with A, W, S, and D, just like you would be walking on Roblox. So this is just a much easier way to like customize your camera into a direction where you want. If you ever want to change the face of your character, you can simply go back to Roblox Studio, change whatever you want to change in the texture, then export it with a different name, then go back to Blender and insert the new texture that you saved and it will change. Alright, once you're happy with your scene, head over to Render Properties and under Sampling, change the render to 200 250 you can go higher or lower depending on how powerful your computer is i usually recommend doing 300 the max or 200. also go to output properties and make sure that the resolution is set to 100. you also want to make sure that your background is transparent to do so go to film then click on transparent. Finally, you can head over to render and click on render image. Now your work should start rendering. And once it's done, head over to image and click on save as. And from there, you can start saving it wherever you wish to save it. Just don't forget to give it a name as well. Now you can exit out of the render window and you can save your work and continue making more renders of your work or you can just exit out of the page and you're done. In the next tutorial, I will be teaching you how to edit your renders using an editing software. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I will try my best to help you. I hope you found this tutorial useful and helpful. I tried my best to be as clear as possible. It is definitely way better than the last tutorial that I made, which was back in 2016. So yeah, I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye!